uh, this was just a final impression. And if you are going to congresses or uh, whatever you are going to, you see all the time provisions on interior grounds. Now we want to explain you very briefly how we are going to create a uh, provisional on the molar, on the posterior region. It goes so fluently, but we would like to uh, tell you step by step how it works and what Stefan expects me to do to manipulate a little bit of soft tissue. We create our master cast very briefly with the soft tissue, and then you have our initial master cast. And you see directly the level of the gingiva is not where it has to be, but it has to be. So this means that we have to create something, a wax up, and then manipulate a little bit soft tissue. Um, uh, exactly, we always make an ideal wax up, whatever the gingiva will be. We don't follow the line of the gingiva. We created just a crown like it has to be. So you see, if you pattern your, your wax modulation, you unscrew it of your soft dish or from your master cast, you can see red line, there is more or less a rich lab. We have to go over the soft tissue to become a normal volume of a molar. So the, the next step is then, okay, we have to deal with a rich lab. How we are going to deal this? Because I want to like, uh, I would like to, to, to give Stefan the opportunity to a little bit to manage the soft tissue, soft tissue according to the provisional tooth we have created in our lab. You see on the red line, this is the gingival line. The black one is also the, the gingiva line, and the red one is the gingiva line we would like to have afterwards, after the final restoration will be done. If you have your wax up, like I told you, the ideal shape, the ideal proportion of the molar, then we build it up with wax, and this we will replace afterwards in resin, because we need a concave shape underneath the gingiva. Okay, in this case, there was a very deep... Uh, uh, <coughs> deepness of the, the, the implant was more than 4.2 millimeters underneath the gingiva, and then we trim our uh, soft tissue, but always uh, what Stefan told us to do, and can you explain a little bit more right. about how much we can create? Right, of course, the, the most important aspect, and when, when you're on the ma laboratory master cast, when you want to prepare this for the clinician, what you should always do, consider that from a clinical perspective, it's more easy for me to manipulate the tissues more in the coronal part rather than at the part where we have basically right coming out of the implant. So th it is very important that we have, as Patrick just created already, a very concave emergence profile. Mm -hmm. This can be, in my eyes, rather slightly over contoured, so rather take away a little bit more on your master cast, because for me, clinically, it's easier to polish away. If I can see that I cannot seat the abutment properly, that, that it is basically too wide initially mm. when I receive my components from Patrick, then I can very easily, in, in a matter of minutes, can manipulate the curvature and then sub subsequently add at later visits, add another composite to really sculpt and contour yeah. the tissue. So be very, very small and uh, with the minimum dimensions, I would say, right when it comes out of the implant and then basically have a concave emergence to the contour yeah. that you actually want to achieve at the end of the day with the crown. That's correct. This is more or less the communication, how much I have to uh, grind away to make a perfect fitting provisional crown. Very easily, we have our master cast. We take just a temporary cylinder and then you take just a factory tooth. You grind the hole in it, and then you connect this actually to this temporary cylinder. It goes very fast. You don't have to create an extra wax up of your, or you don't have to create something else. Just a confection to it, and then uh, put it together on your master cast. See, you have your indexes all the time because you put it in the articulator, not overbuilt the occlusion, and then you have everything under control. Um, everything which below actually the, uh, the the implant, you take some silicon. And then you, you create actually a, a hole where you fit in our provisional crown. Nothing more like that. It goes very fluently. You can screw it occlusally without problem. You see the concave shape to the implant. A few images of the provisional crown. It looks like a normally temporary crown, a confection to it. It goes very easily and very yeah, quick, very fast. Um, 
the shape of uh, the concavity, you can maybe explain it. I think I have to adjust the, the, or to, to, to add the smoothness of the surface. I, I invest a lot of time to polish it very smooth, which is underneath the gingiva for the provisional part. Eh? Right, exactly. I think it's very, very um, important at this stage that when you start creating this emergence profile for your, for your final restoration, that you really want to make sure that there is no infection or anything in the soft tissues afterwards and that the tissue have the chance to really adapt to the surface. So yeah. I think polishing is key. Yeah. 